Hi, can you hear me? Yes? All right, thanks. Um, uh, hello, and thank you for having me here today. I'm uh, very much excited because this is my first talk and my first ever security research. So uh, today we're going to talk about brute forcing malware, and specifically for WordPress. And the reason why is that 28% of uh, internet is running WordPress. So uh, it's uh, around 20 million sites out there. It's a really big pool for hackers. So we decided to do the research and to find out what kind of malware uh, is out there in doing the brute forcing. So any one of you who have ever done research of any kind is probably familiar with these infographics. This is the emotional ups and downs of doing the research of any kind. So you started with a great idea, it's like you're excited and then you modify it a little bit and then, you know, not something works, something not. And then in the end you're in this green area where there's happy unicorns, you are, you know, ready to share the results that you found out. So I'm here today to uh, share with you what we found out uh, with, you know, during the research that we did with a colleague of mine and uh, I think it's time to introduce uh, uh, people who were doing the research. So um, my name is Anna and together with uh, Veronica who is uh, the co-author of this research we are doing this threat research in Cisco, in particular in cognitive threat analytics. This is the uh, group within Cisco which is uh, applying machine learning algorithms uh, to identify malicious behaviors and anomalies in the network. So our job is to look at the data. We are looking at the data all day long and specifically on a network traffic and uh, that's what we do, it's fun. Um, before we get started, I'd like to thank uh, people who were participating in this research. I'd like to say thank you to Sebastian Garcia for providing data sets. Uh, we are going to release all uh, data sets uh, of Satterbot on the stratosphere.org. Uh, I put the link there uh, in, at the end as well, so you can search for Satterbot there if you are interested. And the second person I'd like to say thank you is Yindrich Karasik. He uh, created the visualization of the uh, CNCs of Satterbot that I will show you later. So uh, let's define the goal of this talk. Today we're going to talk about three things. Uh, we are going to uh, cover the historical overview of uh, brute forcing malware. Uh, so to understand the, how big the problem is. The second, we are going to present a uh, deep dive on the Trojan called Satterbot. And the third, we will discuss some detection methods and uh, why it, this is important. We are not going to talk today about the binary reversing. There are several reasons why. First, it was done already before by other researchers, uh, so we didn't want to repeat it. And second, we are focusing on the network traffic in particular and um, on the, learn the by running malware on the long term. So we are mostly focusing on malware behavior, let's say. And we are not going to cover all possible malware which is doing brute forcing because it's a lot and it's just, we just don't have time for it. So uh, brute force attacks are not something new. They exist for quite a while and usually uh, hacker, hackers are trying to break authentication to get an access to the administration panel. So content management systems uh, rely on authentication and WordPress in particular uh, rely on the form based authentication method where a user needs to uh, put their username and password to log in. So there are two types, there is like vp slash login.php and another possible variant to use a uh, XML RPC call, but it was not designed to, for authentic authentication, but uh, you can use the username and, um, and the password to log in. So brute forcing, uh, this is the most common types of attack against uh, content management systems. The main goal of it is to get access to the administration login panel. Attackers are taking an advantages of the fact that users are using um, 
simple, simple passwords as QWERTY or 12345, root 123, um, and sometimes they don't even change the password at all. So when they ha the, the site is hacked, the, it usually becomes spreading other malware or getting sold on the black market. So it's, uh, it's, it's never ending on the, let's say, on the, on the hacked side. It usually have a continuation. So to understand the scale of the problem, uh, I'd like to present you the historical overview and uh, we're gonna talk about some of the malware happened during the uh, different times of year in the history. So 2009 brought us the first record of the distributing brute forcing attack. And uh, I need to remind you that the uh, WordPress was found in 2003 and I'm sure there were different attempts to brute force it but the first distributing brute forcing attack was reported in 2009. At least we were able to find it. So if you have other data, please share. So there was the small PHP script which was found in the, by the user um, on his private VPS server. The script was uh, getting around 200 URLs and then the second value of the password and tried to brute force it. The, this was the published on the sense blog post, so when we release the uh, slides, you can go ahead and check all the links out there, I, I put it for you. Then the, during the 2010 up to 2012, there are other events happened, and, uh, including the uh, hacking of WordPress, but uh, we are mostly interested in 2013. There was the uh, famous campaign called 4 Disco. Um, uh, this is first was reported by the Dr. Web antivirus company. Uh, they found out the Trojan spreading and brute forcing content management system and in particular WordPress. They call it VP Cracker. Later on this year, other security researchers and hosting providers uh, like published, we're talking about the global brute forcing uh, attack. Uh, which is got its name as a 4 disco because of the uh, string found in the in the PE metadata. Uh, Arbor Networks did a great research on that. They actually identified six common and control servers related to this threat. But the interesting thing is that 4 disco was also linked to the other uh, malware activities. Let's say so they found out that. Uh, the 4Disco was not only brute forcing content management system, but it also uh, installed the, the small uh, PHP file, which is a backdoor, which uh, was called Fileless Man. It was designed uh, to redirect users, uh, with a which is meeting specific requirements as a operation system and the browser uh, version to the sticks exploit kit. And the other security researchers found out the strong, strong de indication uh, of hacked by four disco websites to the black hole exploit kit. That was very famous during that year. And other security researchers also, also saw that hacked websites by four disco were uh, redirecting, used by the St steel rat botnet, uh, which was uh, launching its uh, spam campaign. The next year that we are going to cover is 2014. Uh, and it brought us Mayhem uh, botnet. It was first reported by uh, Malware Must Die team in their uh, blog post and Twitter handle. And later on, Yandex uh, uh, company did the research on the Mayhem and uh, they found out interesting thing about it. So um, it's a modular botnet, it has six modules and all of them are related to brute forcing or crawling. So there are uh, three modules relating to the brute forcing in particular, including uh, a brute forcing FTP accounts, and uh, two others are just related to the crawling on IP or the URLs. The Yandex ex experts in their paper mentioned that Mayhem is actually a continuation of Ford Disco, which we found really interesting. There are other things happened in 2014 which is worth to mention. Uh, first, there was for, uh, the attack on the ex hackers exploited for the first time XML RPC call. 
and in particular vp.getuserblocks. Uh, this attack is being made possible because um, many calls in the WordPress XML RPC uh, implementation require username and password. The second thing that happened in 2014 is not strongly related to brute forcing, but um, it was the, the vulnerability in uh, mail poet plugin uh, of WordPress. This is a very popular plugin. It was downloaded around 100, 1,500,000 times. And the bug which was discovered allows the attacker remotely upload any site, anything on your web server with no authentication, with no username and password basically. It was heavily abused by the campaign called EI Test. It's still active. Uh, it's, it's known by delivering ransomware, and it was uh, part of the infrastructure of different exploit kits as well, and adware, anything. So uh, it still works. And later this year, sorry, later this year, uh, security researchers from F-Secure found out that all sites that they used by EI Test were WordPress, and they also attackers were using brute forcing simply to obtain uh, access to the login pages of WordPress, and then particularly use them in the activity of IA test. So the next year brought us uh, several other interesting examples of malware. Uh, first is the Athware. This uh, was reported by the Voidsec security researcher who was experiencing the uh, brute forcing attack on his personal WordPress site. He found out that all IPs are coming from Italy and all of them belongs to devices. He starts to dig in and he found out that all IPs were just belongs to the Athra uh, routers. So they all had, the routers had the default, default password, so which was apparently abused by the hackers who then taken advantages and installed the malware on the routers which uh, launched the brute forcing attack. And Brian Krebs during that year, at the same, the same time, posted a blog post saying that um, infamous uh, Lizard Squad hacking group was uh, knocking offline different websites and apparently there is a strong indication of uh, Lizard Squad using Athra vulnerability or default passwords to power off their DDoS tool. The other thing that happened in 2015 is the appearing of e CMS catcher malware. So Veronica Valeras, who is the also co-author of this research, she was studying Gamaru Andromeda botnet and she let, it, she let it run for 30 days in a sandbox and after 14 days she found out that the bot delivered a new payload and that new payload actually she called it CMS catcher. It was designed to simply brute force uh, WordPress sites. So the bot uh, uh, obtained the file which contains 1000 uh, sites approximately and it tries to brute force it with uh, common combination of uh, passwords the user are using. And during the four days of capture, she was able to uh, obtain 300 files, which contains around 220,000 sites out there. So it's quite, a while. it's quite a big for one bot. And the last uh, malware which uh, we're going to cover in 2015 is a troll dash. This is a ransomware. You don't expect ransomware to do brute forcing. This one is, is doing exactly this. Um, after encrypting users, file, users files, it's just uh, obtaining the new payload and it starts to perform brute forcing. The next year is 2016, brought us uh, two interesting events. One of them was the report about the Ukrainian ISP uh, which was unknown and which launched around 1,000,000.65 attacks per day. Uh, in fact, most of the information that was about this uh, ISP was abuse reporting in Google. So for the brute force traffic originating from the six IPs from this unknown ISP was larger than the entire brute force traffic coming from uh, OVH, Ross Telecom, and GoDaddy put all together. 
Later this year, World, De uh, World Defense published a blog post about botnet called Chicken Kiev. And this is the botnet just, you know, doing different uh, malicious activities and using for that WordPress sites. And they mentioned that the, probably the uh, access to these web websites were obtained via brute forcing. And they linked it with the activity of this unknown ISP provider coming from Ukraine and responsible for 1.65 million attacks. 2017 brought us another malware, including Sutterbot that we're gonna cover later. And this is the Stantinko. It was discovered by ESAT. Uh, this is the modular botnet, which is responsible for uh, injecting ads in browsers and click fraud. But it also has an interesting plugin, which is called Brute Plugin, self-explanatory. It's only doing the, it's performing brute forcing and mostly dictionary attack because it obtains the list of passwords from the uh, common and control server. So, uh, as we can see, the different malware appeared in the different time in history. Uh, they are very, like, the brute forcing that they, or the attack that they are doing is very simple. It is simple, it's automated, and it works. Uh, otherwise, the other malware would not design specific plugins or models to brute force it. It still works, it's still successful. Uh, the, uh, to, to, to look at the similarity between brute forcing malware, uh, we choose the Trojan called Sutterbot. It got the, um, the coverage in media in 2017, but we found out that Sutterbot was actually uh, quite an old uh, malware. We discovered that it's dated, that it first created in 2013. So, uh, by searching in Google, we found out that the, uh, there is a blog post uh, on the forum where users saying, hey, my girlfriend got infected and she downloaded something from Torrent, and he was very nice, so he posted a link on VirusTotal, and uh, if you guys have an access to the uh, VirusTotal intelligence, uh, you know that you can go there, heuristically see how many antivirus vendors were detecting the malware when it first was uploaded. So that was detected back in 2013 as a backdoor uh, hydro loader. But if you go to the 2017, it actually belongs to Satterbot. So Satterbot is a modular botnet. It has four modules, a backdoor, downloader, web crawler, and brute forcer. We are going to cover today mostly web crawler and brute forcer, brute forcing module. Uh, so the uh, infection starts spreading when the user is uh, searching uh, in search engines, is searching for the pirate software or movie. And uh, the URL pattern of the infected torrent looks like this. I highlighted it in here. Um, when the user starts torrenting and then downloading the file of the movies and then the installer codec and the text file saying, hey, you need to run the installer. And when the user runs the installer, it gets the error saying, you know, that uh, the installer that you are trying to use is corrupted. But actually during that time, it invokes Satterbot and the host is becoming the part of the Satterbot network at that time. So after that, the bot starts uh, crawling. Uh, for crawling, it's using uh, free search engines, Google, Bing, and uh, Yandex. So since the bot is communicating in a clear text, we were able to find out what uh, words bot is searching in the search engines. And so this is the example of the search in Bing. You can see the bot is searching combination of free words like makers, manage, manual, like very standard. And then uh, search in Google are pretty much the same. Uh, we designed the, we, we, we collected the whole words from the search engines and did the cloud of words, let's say. So here is the, you can see that, for example, the word beauty in Bing was the, 
was searched like 210 times, and then the, the next popular Google, 111, and so on. So the example in Google looks pretty much the same, so the list is, is almost identical. However, the Yandex stands out. We don't know why, but Bot is searching for combination of letters in Yandex. This is uh, just a small example. It's lots of combination of letters, but I cannot put them all on the, uh, on the slide, obviously. Um, after the bot collecting uh, websites, it starts to uh, perform the check if the sites are running on WordPress. It's simply doing the get request to the URL to the vp.login.php to identify the uh, login panel. And after successfully identify the sites running on WordPress, it's starting brute forcing. So it's using for brute forcing XML RPC call, and in particular, vp.get users blogs. Uh, it's using as a, a username the domain name of the site, and the password is a, the one that obtained from the common and control server. It was reported before that the bot is using that combination all the time and only one password. And the bot is trying to brute force only one side once. So tries, I don't know, the password magic to some site and then move to the next one. Yes, we observe this kind of behavior. We call it standard credential combinations. You, here you can see the password is still magic and it's tried to uh, brute force some side and um, I need to mention here that all examples that you see today in this presentation are coming from one capture which was uh, happening for five days in a sandbox with no user interaction or browser activity. So we observed that the bot is actually doing non-standard credential combination. So in, here, in this example you see that uh, the a Russian side is uh, being brute forced with a particular different uh, username and the password changed from magic to swimming. This is a very interesting example, especially for me. Uh, I'm a native Russian speaker and the name of the site means water kennel. So the password is swimming. I don't know if it's a joke but, or it's a coincidence that it just happened like this. And the second interesting thing is that the username uh, for, used for the brute forcing is actually a real username. So uh, we don't know, but we assume that the bot is performing uh, an enumeration scan. So it's trying to, um, the, there is uh, the possibility to do an enumeration scan and to identify user data by requesting numerical IDs. So for example, you are searching like author equals one up to 1000 and you can get real uh, usernames there. So this is actually your real username. So we probably think that the, the bot is performing a numeration scan. We also found out that uh, one side uh, is actually brute forced more than once and more than when with one password. So for example, here is the Romanian site. At 2 p.m. was brute forced with the password Makito, and at 6 p.m. it was brute forced with the password system. So since the bot is communicating in a clear text uh, and sending the uh, attack in the, via the post request, we were able to uh, collect the whole uh, passwords that bot was using during the five days of capture. And uh, there is an interesting password uh, distribution, let's say. So I'd expect that on the first place you will see something like admin or admin, admin, admin123, but it's pericles. It like, stands out here. It's not very, very common, I'd say. And also we try to, to, to see if the bot is using standard dictionary, the password dictionary. We were not able to find uh, online the available list of passwords. So we assume that bot is using customized password list. Here I did the breakdown for uh, 20 top password tried by the bot. And you can see that Pericles was used uh, almost 50,000 times. And uh, there are other interesting words that I'm not going to pronounce here. But uh, for example, 
you can see that the pericles was used more than, for example, root one, two, three, which is, I found very interesting. The bot is also trying to brute force everything. It's, it's not trying to, you know, avoid some famous sites. It's trying to probe Quora and Giphy and Snapchat and even Twitter if it's uh, running on WordPress or not. So um, we were curious if the attack is targeting a particular country or not. And we did a breakdown on the top level domains. And the, the attack is global because there is no particular con country like targeted to stands out. The most uh, TLD you was, you know, probed, let's say it's .com. The high number is like half a million and a half explains that um, WordPress also hosting free blogs. So you can create a free blog and the, uh, you get the, I don't know, name of the blog .wordpress.com. So probably that's also the, the that's why the, the number is so high. We were curious about the infrastructure of the botnet. Uh, we started with the four uh, IP addresses of the common and control servers, and uh, we were using Maltego to pivoting and found out more uh, possible uh, websites involved. And turns out the infrastructure became really big. It doesn't fit in on the slide, but if you guys are interested, I can send you the whole file so you can study it. Uh, you, thanks to Maltego, we were um, identified some uh, old domain names which were used in uh, 2015 and 16, and we noticed some uh, version change. So here you can see the free um, URLs uh, in the three different years. And uh, in 2015, you can see that I highlighted the part in here, so it's always WordPress.php, some pattern, and then uh, v equals one, and then in 2016, the, uh, this is almost identical, except the different domain name, but 2017, you can see it changed, it got, WordPress became caucusdriver.php, and the version became equals three. So by looking at the, these domains, we were able to find out that the one of the domain has a link to uh, email address. This was only the one record. Uh, it belongs to the email listma7653 at yahoo.com. So after that, there is no other activity or like linked uh, domains to the uh, email address. So let's take a look at the connection sequence. When the bots start, the infection started, it's, it's uh, checking the connectivity. It connects to the Google first, and after it gets, gets okay, it starts, uh, it contacts the first CNC. This CNC is hard-coded uh, because there was no other, uh, uh, there was no user interaction, so this domain was uh, connected right after the connectivity check. And um, this domain, the, the get request uh, to this domain are coming every two hours from the infected host, and post request from the infected host to the, uh, this domain coming every 10 seconds. So we assume that the bot is, uh, uh, the host is reporting some information to the bot every 10 seconds via the post request. After that, the crawling started, and the bot is uh, searching in search engines, in uh, being, uh, Google and Yandex, the combination of words and letters. And uh, shortly after, it contacts the second CNC via the DNS uh, request. The response comes in the DNS tech rec text record and it's encoded string. And uh, this encoded string belongs to, it's, it, it is a location of the third CNC. During the capture, we were able to see, for the five days, it, uh, we were able to see only that the bot is contacting uh, second CNC only once. So the first CNC uh, infected host sending only post requests to this server uh, every 16 minutes. We assume that this is this CNC used only for reporting. And the fourth CNC was contacted only once uh, via the get request and it was delivering binary. Uh, also, uh, the third and fourth CNC are sharing the same IP addresses. So they kind of uh, split the infrastructure where the one domain is just dedicated to the reporting and the other one, and the other one is just delivering binaries. 
So we were able to obtain different uh, uh, command and control servers of the SATA bot, and uh, we noticed some pattern in there. Uh, first, we called it as a lazy admin approach because so we found out that um, all of these categories are, uh, have for uh, repeating some word. So for example, we divided them in the four groups, uh, force, master, slave, and boom. And uh, in force domains, uh, basically those ones who are, which are related to, which were hard-coded, which the boss is contacting for the first time. And master ones is the one, the, these ones are using by the DNS and delivering the location of the third CNC. Slaves ones are used for reporting and boom ones are linked to the uh, torrent trackers. There are other groups of uh, domains which we were able to identify. They are also sharing some uh, pattern in here as well as the different torrent trackers, location of different torrent trackers. So at the end, I'd like to, uh, we were looking for the uh, way to look at the botnet, like on the common and control server infrastructure. So uh, Yindra Karasi created a visualization for us. This is the visualization of communication of common and control server SATA bot. Uh, for that, we extracted all communication to the CNCs, to the pickup, then pickup was parsed and extracted to the CSV format. And then by Gelfi, uh, the, the algorithm, it was the, the visualization created. I put, put the link to the Indra's website so you can guys check it. He has an amazing visualization project out there. So I briefly explain you, this is the very highlight, um, highlight uh, high level overview of the communication. So the, by letter A, it's, this is related to the infected host and the big dot, big black, Circuits are basically the timestamp of the connection. It's always coming from the source to destination and from destination to the source. So the A is the infected host. D belongs to the torrent tracker. C is a uh, report. The, the C connection, as you can see here, this is this pink line from A coming from A to C. This is basically the uh, reporting coming from the host to the uh, common and control server which was used for reporting. So this is kind of like a post request coming from the host. And the uh, red one is the updates which was delivered uh, by the uh, fourth CNC. So since the, uh, there are two domains uh, sharing the same IP, this is kind of self-explanatory. And then the, uh, we can see the connection between A and B. This is the hard-coded uh, common and control server. So it gets some uh, uh, updates via the GET request, and then it's uh, also posting every, every 10 seconds to the, uh, back to the CNC. So by looking at the SATA bot, we were uh, thinking about how better to detect it. And uh, there are several ways how to do it. Uh, so brute forcing attacks, uh, um, basically there is two types of brute forcing attack, is uh, vertical and horizontal. In the vertical brute forcing attacks, uh, one host is trying to contact the one website uh, all over again and trying the different combination of passwords to it. It's very easy to spot from the point of the view of if you have a WordPress site, you probably see, you can, you can see that uh, one AP is constantly trying to log in. So you can implement the simple counter and say like, for example, okay, after five times you try to connect to me, I'll block you. Um, from the point of view of the, like, if you are a defender, it's uh, also easy to detect. You could probably use the uh, IDS rules for that, or uh, you can hunt uh, for these kind of uh, attacks in the CM. On the proxy logs, you see that infected host is uh, trying to connect all the time to some different admin panel, to, to the admin panel of the WordPress site all over and over again. And, uh, Horizontal brute forcing attacks are more sophisticated. They usually, uh, instead of, like, so one single computer is trying to uh, brute force multiple WordPress sites only once. So if you have a WordPress site, you probably, uh, it's better to, if you have some security plugins, they are really good out there and uh, really helpful. 
but uh, from the de defender point of view, um, you probably, IDS is not the best solution. It can bring lots of false positives. You can hunt for these activities in CM, obviously. On the proxy logs, you would see that the infected host try, tries to connect to multiple the thousands of login pa panels uh, of WordPress site. But what uh, we think is best solution is behavioral analytics. So you identify two types of brute forcing and then apply automation on that. And it, you, you don't need to look at that uh, again. So you're probably wondering, so why should I care? Well, let's look at the bigger picture. The, then the massive uh, attempts to the login, the, to the WordPress sites can be a start of the most sophisticated attack. Uh, we saw that routinely that uh, exploit kids are using a word, like hacked sites in their infrastructure. As well, it's a starting point of uh, mostly all malware out there. This is, uh, think about it, like one small site can just be spreading or infecting thousands of users. This is very important. And um, what did we learn today? We, we know that uh, C content management systems are being brute forced probably from the very beginning of the creation. The, 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 the attack is still successful, it still works. Uh, since the user is still using weak passwords or outdated software or just not even changing password at all. Uh, we also know that the WordPress site or like any, any actually site is probably the important component in the malware ecosystem. And uh, during our research, we actually um, didn't find a good, uh, good research on the brute forcing attacks, even though the attack itself is very old. And, uh, we, and it's really hard to measure the successful rate of this type of attack. So how many sites were brute forced, how many attempts were successful. This is actually applies to the future work of our research. Uh, we are going to publish a paper uh, at the end of this year where we're gonna cover more information of the CMO malware and more details about the SATR bot and uh, the three uh, major, major things that we're gonna focus on is the to measure the success rate, so to, to identify the successful logins. And then uh, we, we are curious how often the password changed since we know that the bot is changing the password. And uh, the third thing is uh, the follow the hack, let's say. So we are curious to find out uh, if the hacked WordPress sites were used by some malware, for example. So that's our future work. So. Uh, I put the link of the Satterbot pickup and other data set in here, and there you can find it on the stratosphere.org, uh, and um, search it by Satterbot there. We are releasing the data probably today, so you can be able to find it. So if you have any questions, uh, I'm, I'm here to answer you. Thank you. <laughs>